Fizzbands has been out for quite a while and we've already tackled a chromatic and metallic dragon, so it's finally time to take a look at one of our newly added gem buddies. And so the goal of today's encounter, apart from making it fun and engaging, is to incorporate a powerful ally into an encounter without taking the spotlight off your players. Hello, my name is Matt and welcome to my hidden nerdy side and today we're tackling Amethyst Dragons. But first, let's talk about their lore. Amethyst dragons are said to be the mightiest of all the gem dragons, and are known for their psionic powers and their ability to manipulate fundamental principles of the multiverse. With these powers, amethyst dragons are capable of some pretty amazing things, like flying without relying on their wings, or using breath weapons that literally stop enemies in their tracks. Now, if you're not aware, gem dragons are a rather new official class of dragon in D&D 5e, and what primarily sets them apart from the good metallic dragons or the evil chromatic dragons is they tend to sit in the neutral zone, essentially being a draconic Switzerland. But of course, that's only a flavor option to help guide you in the encounter creation process, because even the neutral gem dragons have their own personal biases and opinions. And this is particularly true about amethyst dragons. You see, they are fascinated by the existence of other worlds and strive to understand the cosmic forces that emanate from the outer planes. They are interested in the study of good and evil, chaos and order, and their incredibly vast and balanced knowledge of all things makes their counsel and wisdom quite valuable. But despite their interest in both sides of morality, they detest the corruption that comes with creatures from the far realms trying to invade the material plane, and will strongly oppose such intrusions. However, they are completely blinded by hatred and can still see some far realm creatures such as flumps are not evil like many other aberrations. Also, even though amethyst dragons are quite knowledgeable about many things, they don't end up making tons of connections with creatures due to their rather hermit mentality. And when they do make such connections, it's usually for philosophical or intellectual pursuits. And finally, the part of amethyst dragon lore your players will want to know most. What do these types of dragons hoard? Well, they are collectors of planar knowledge and unique treasure from all over the multiverse, so there will definitely be some goodies for your players to enjoy, if they have a reason to kill one. Now when we jump over to their actions and abilities, there is a lot to go over. So like with all dragons, the younger they are, the weaker they are, and what they gain access to increases in strength and amount the older they get. Notable traits of all amethyst dragons include their ability to hover, swim, and breathe both air and water. They are also all resistant to force and psychic damage, have a limited blindsight range, and are immune to being frightened or knocked prone, which is a nice detail given their control over gravity, and it paints a nice picture to have them just float back upright. This control over gravity is even more on display with their breath weapon called Singularity Breath, which deals force damage and has the chance to reduce a creature's speed to zero. They can also speak telepathically and cast a selection of spells, starting with smaller stuff like Tensor's Floating Disc and Unseen Servant, and later on moving up to big boy spells like Plane Shift and Globe of Invulnerability. Also, the bigger they get, the more access they gain to various physical attacks like bites and claw attacks, and they also gain the ability to shape change and teleport to an area within 60 feet of them. And finally, the older amethyst dragons can shoot explosive crystals out of their mouth, which blow up, deal force damage, and knock creatures prone. Now, there are also some really cool lair actions, such as being able to cast spatial projections of themselves or use force cage, and they also have some sweet regional effects like amethyst crystals forming within six miles of their lair. But today's video won't be taking place in an amethyst dragon's lair, so if you want to learn more about that, make sure to check out Fizzband's Treasury of Dragons. Now, we'll also be making a few homebrew changes. One will be better explained during our encounter making process. However, the two I'll explain right now are, one, our dragon is going to be absolutely massive. Now, ancient dragons are already gargantuan, but our amethyst dragon is going to be even bigger bigger, like at least 100 feet long. And two, our dragon can use Psychic Step to not only teleport itself, but all creatures within its gravitational field. Now, what is its gravitational field? Well, we'll get into that in just a bit. 
So now that we've gone over the basic Amethyst Dragon lore, info, and abilities, let's build an encounter. This encounter slash quest will be aimed at parties level 15 to 20 depending on how difficult you want to make it, and last about 2 to 3 sessions depending on how long you want to stretch it out. The party's motivation should always be tailored to your campaign, but for simplicity's sake, we'll say your players need access to a certain part of your world, and it's only achievable through the assistance of an Amethyst this dragon. So, there is only one requirement you need to run this series of encounters, and that is a reason why your players need to travel to a different plane of existence, because this encounter is going to be about making the most out of your journey, but the destination will be entirely up to you. So for whatever reason you decide, your players need to travel to a different plane of existence. Now normally, this might not seem to be a big deal due to spells like Plane Shift, however this plane is unreachable by these methods. This could be due to the chaotic nature of the plane and it's just a permanent fixture of its environment, or it could be a temporary thing, such as a powerful magical empire is blocking all planar travel to it. What your reason will end up being will heavily depend on what plane you choose to send your players and the reason they're going there. But your players will find out there is a knowledgeable wizard in your world who knows a lot about planar travel who might just be able to assist your party. This could be someone you create purely for this quest or an NPC you've already established, it doesn't matter. But after finding this wizard, he, she, or they will only know a little bit about what's going on with your chosen plane because it's so difficult to get to. However, the wizard will have a way to find out more. The wizard will cast sending and arrange a meeting with a mystery person in a secret location. Upon arriving there, your party will see the visage of an elegant female humanoid slowly turn into the largest dragon they have ever seen, stretching over a hundred feet long long and with a wingspan just as wide. This dragon will be called Degora, and Degora will be an amethyst dragon. She will be rather cold and calculated, but will also be a huge planar nerd. Anything involving weird planar magics, relics, or knowledge of any kind will result in Degora ever so slightly dropping her guard since she can barely contain her love for such things. So roleplay her seriously, but allow your players to make insight checks to spot the geeky persona she desperately really tries to hide under her stoic exterior. Now, Degora will know quite a lot about the plane your players want to travel to, at least enough to point them in the right direction for their grander quest. However, Degora will also know traveling there is impossible by a simple spell, and so Degora will offer to plane shift your party to the closest plane and then fly your players there by traveling through, for lack of a better term, an incredibly dangerous and chaotic space highway. But of course, this service won't be free, as Degora will request your players fetch an ancient relic you decide on as payment for her trouble. She will also make it clear she will only help get your players to the plane. Getting the relic and completing their original quest is entirely left to your party. Degora will then wait for your players in the plane and bring them home once they're done, and the ancient relic will quite literally act as their ticket home. One last thing, when Degora says this space highway is dangerous and crazy, she means it. In fact, she all but guarantees there will be a fight of some kind, for many aberrations and evil creatures use this highway to travel between planes, so your players will be told to be prepared for anything. So Degora will take your players to a plane via plane shift, fly out of the atmosphere into this chaotic space between planes, and then onward to your destination. And this is where our final homebrew change comes into place, because while traveling at high speeds in a crazy environment, Degora will use her knowledge of the multiverse to create a magical gravitational field 120 feet outward from herself in all directions. It will appear as a very faint purple dome surrounding her that you can easily see through. It's not strong enough to repel projectiles or massive objects being hurled at her, but it will keep all creatures inside the dome unless they choose otherwise and also give them the ability to fly freely within it. Oh yeah, and that's only the beginning of our shenanigans. So there will be three encounters along this grand journey with only enough time for a short rest in between each one, which means your players will have to be careful with resource allocation. On top of that, if Degora goes down, your players will float off into the vast astral sea of nothingness and will eventually die. So keeping your dragon healthy while dealing with the many threats that will arise is the balancing act your players will have to perform. The first encounter will be with Githyanki astral pirates. The Githyanki tend to raid the 
the astral plane and its travelers, so they are a perfect warm-up encounter for your players. Their ship will spot Degora and fly on over to pillage your party. Unfortunately, this ship will be armed with ballista and cannons aimed at Degora, so your players will have to deal with this Githyanki crew before she goes down. But your players can do a number of things. They can either knock the artillery weapons off the ship, kill all the Githyanki, or the most metal route, destroy the ship entirely. We'll say on this ship there are 15 to 20 Githyanki warriors, 2 to 4 Githyanki knights, 2 to 4 Githyanki gish, and a Githyanki kithrak. Now this might seem like a lot of baddies for just a single encounter when there are more to come, but remember, your players will not only be high level, but will have a dragon ally who will be aiding them with a breath weapon that can one-shot many of the warriors, so don't be too concerned about these high numbers. Also, whenever you run massive battles like these, I cannot recommend using the minion rule enough. Google minion rule for more details, but essentially, it's when you give every enemy NPC 1 HP, and if your players hit them, they die. I use a modified version of this, where some creatures take 2, 3, or even 5 hits to fully kill them, but this rule definitely keeps big combats from becoming too long and boring. Now, this Githyanki ship will have a similar gravitational field surrounding it, and with Degora flying and teleporting around their ship, the two fields will have some crossover, allowing both your players and the Githyanki to travel from field to field to create extra spicy shenanigans. So some of your players may jump onto the ship to create chaos, while some may stay on Degora to fend off the boarding Githyanki. It's their call to make. Next, there will be an asteroid field Degora will have to navigate her way through. However, the sheer number of asteroids will be too much to handle as they are also moving at high speeds every which way. So your players are going to have to use their imaginations to fend off the onslaught. This will happen over six rounds. The asteroids will start 200 feet away from Degora and will move 100 feet closer when the initiative hits 10 and 0, colliding into Degora in the end. We'll say you roll a d6 each round and that's how many asteroids will be spotted flying toward Degora, with the minimum being 2. For each asteroid, roll a d4 and select from the corresponding table what the asteroid stats are. Now one thing your players might be thinking is why can't Degora move out of the way, or even better, Psychic Step out of the way? Well, there are many ways to squash this question. You could have so many asteroids in the field that there are only a limited number of ways to navigate it, so you can roleplay as Degora talking about how she's taking the best possible route. It will also be assumed Degora is moving as fast as she can and being as evasive as she can during this encounter, so what's coming is on top of all of her best efforts. And finally, if your players are really being sticklers, you could always have Degora psychic step forward and then introduce more asteroids as a result. Now, if your players fail to destroy all the asteroids by the end of each round, the asteroids will collide with Degora and she'll have to make a DC 18 dexterity saving throw to reduce the damage by half. However, let's not limit this asteroid dodging to just Degora, because there are plenty of players traveling on her back. So every once in a while, have an asteroid be traveling toward a player, and if they fail a dexterity saving throw, they take their damage and are also pushed 30 feet in the appropriate direction. Now, because your players can technically fly in Degora's gravitational field, this won't be too much of a problem. But if one of your players is floating near the edge, oh baby, things could get sticky. However, we now arrive at the most dangerous encounter, because as your party continues to travel, they will see a smaller amethyst dragon far off in the distance. Even Degora will feel comfort at first, before quickly realizing just how bad the situation is, because this amethyst dragon won't have a gravitational field surrounding it, but a makeshift capsule attached to its back. And once the dragon flies over and grabs onto Degora, she'll notice very quickly this is not a typical amethyst this dragon, but an elder brain dragon with a capsule full of mind flares popping on board to hopefully take control of the juicy big ass dragon body they just discovered. Now if you're unfamiliar with an elder brain dragon, it's a new dragon from Fizzbands and it's basically an elder brain that has taken over a dragon's body. And while your players are fighting off the mind flares and an elder brain dragon, all while on the back of our almighty gem dragon, upon defeating the elder brain dragon, I think it will be incredibly spicy see if the Elder Brain then popped out of it with its original stat block fully charged and started chipping away at Degora, trying to get her low enough so it can take control of her incredible husk. 
We'll say there are anywhere between 4 to 7 Mind Flayers and 2 to 4 Mind Flayer Arcanists, along with the Elder Brain Dragon and the Elder Brain that will hop out of it. But if your players and Agora survive, they will arrive at their destination, complete their task, and then catch a much safer ride back, since Degora will be able to plane shift back to the material plane without difficulty. But with the Githyanki Pirates, Teleporting Dragon Maneuvers, Asteroid Deflection, and Mind Flayer Madness, this is one journey your players will surely not forget. So, extra planar combats and an asteroid whack-a-mole all on the back of an enormous dragon? I think this is all quite spicy enough. But, if we wanted to, how can we make it even spicier? Well, one way would be to change up the crazy aberrations your players run into during this encounter. I mean, any aberration can work so long as they have a vessel to travel on, so go nuts. Another way would be to add elemental damage to the asteroids that have different effects. For example, wind asteroids could explode, dealing bludgeoning damage 30 feet in every direction as the wind smashes into your players. And finally, placing weak spots spots on Degora where she is more vulnerable would add even more danger to this encounter, and it would also give your players a clear side objective. Protect those spots. But anyways, this is just one of many ways you can use Amethyst Dragons in your Dungeons & Dragons campaign. But if you do use this in your future games, make sure to let me know how it goes. And of course, I'm always accepting challenges, so feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching and indulging my hidden nerdy side.